this is a video from me trying to figure out the shad fishing in Fredericksburg on the Rappahannock River. Most of what you read when you look at fishing reports for shad fishing, people talk about the exact baits that they use, the colors, and what jig or spoon it was. They talk about where they fished, the location, and that's it. Nobody really talks about how the fish set up in the river or what kind of retrieves you use. So I'm going to try to explain that because I went into this having absolutely no idea what to do and finished up feeling like I kind of understand how to catch these fish. I'm sure they changed day to day, but we had a pretty fun time with it. And there were definitely a few little tricks that I figured out that I would like to pass on because shad fishing is no secret. Oh, there he was. So I was using a tandem rig of jigs with a quarter ounce on the front and then a 16th ounce trailing behind it. And really the quarter ounce was just to keep it down. The 16th uh, was the bait that would have the best action and get the most bites. This retrieve that I'm doing, pay attention to this retrieve. This was by far the most important part of what we did. All the strikes would come immediately after that sharp pop of the rod tip. Yeah. Got him. It's a little one. Brief description of my rig. I've got these crappy magnets, but I think any straight tailed bait will do. So it darts around. I've got a quarter ounce head in my right hand. That is primarily to keep the bait down in the water column. You use a 16th ounce jig head trailing back behind it. I'm sure any lighter jig head will do, but the quarter ounce is mainly just to keep the bait down. You will catch some on that, but primarily they're going to hit that other jig that is trailing off the back. It moves around a lot better. Notice right here, even though I have the rod pointed down, trying to keep those baits down a little more, I'm still doing that same retrieve, pop, and then reel it up a little bit, pop it, reel it up a little bit, because the bite always comes right after that pop. This is a hefty shot here. First of all, don't take anything I say in the video too seriously. We were goofing off, but right here I want to highlight, if you look, over here towards the bank, you'll see there's an area right alongside the bank where the water kind of slicks off. That was the calmer water, and then the main current is out here where you can see these ripples. These fish, for the most part, when the tide wasn't pushing in, slowing the main current down, these fish were kind of using that seam as, I think, probably a way to swim up the river. And so if you fished that seam where it went from slack to these ripples, that was where most of the fish seemed to be. Things acting different. What the heck do I have? Maybe he's foul hooked? Yeah, he's foul hooked, I think. <laughs> Got the mega shad. <laughs> yeah. That's the fattest shad of the day, I'd say. Ugh. Something that I didn't get a great understanding of until this day was that I thought you had to be in a certain spot to catch shad, and I'm sure certain spots are better than others, but once the boats cleared out of this area, middle of the day, you could fish anywhere. You didn't have to anchor up. You could just troll down the bank fishing that seam line that I was talking about, and we caught them everywhere. So we are fishing within sight of the bridge that crosses the river just below city docks. And there were other fishermen in this area, certainly, you know, nothing secret. 
the way that we figured out how to fish the way that we are is by watching the people who are being the most successful. There were plenty of other fishermen in the area, and the people who were catching the most shad were casting towards the bank like this. And so I didn't try to fish close to where those guys were fishing because really the river was all pretty much the same depth where we were at. There weren't any deep holes or anything like that that I came across. And so I just observed what the people who were being the most successful were doing and tried to duplicate that. That also is how we came up with this retreat. I was watching a guy who was catching a bunch of fish and I didn't go over there and try to fish where he was fishing. I just did what he was doing and it worked out. And I think probably even if they aren't eating a jig, there's going to be people out there on the river that know what they're doing and just pay attention to them. Mm -hmm. They like play. Uh, big shad. In that last clip, we caught those two fish. They were out in front of some shade. I don't know if the shade really mattered that much but it seemed like we were catching some around the edges of those overhanging trees that put a little shade on the water so that may be something you can try i don't know enough about this to know if that was a coincidence or not but it seemed like it could add up Okay, getting a little attitude. Oh, there we go. That's probably gonna wrap things up for this video. This bite is accessible to just about anybody that has something that will float on the water. There's bank fishing, but I don't know anything about that bite, haven't tried that. But you could put a kayak or a John boat in or any boat up at the city dock if you've got a rope that can tie you to a tree or an anchor to hold you in place, or you can move around like what we did if it's not crowded. I think straight tail baits are probably important if you're going to try to jig like I was doing so that bait darts around. Bright colors probably help. Uh, I think you could probably use most anything. I'm sure certain colors do better than others, but for the most part, I think if you would go and do what I did in this video, you'll probably have some success. Yeah, it's fighting like a shad. It's just not hooked in the mouth. Top of the head like that other one. <laughs> 